Did Hillary Clinton take money from the wealthy and the powerful? Who are these wealthy and powerful people? First starters, Denise Rich. Denise Rich is the ex-wife of billionaire fugitive Mark Rich. Mark Rich's criminal history with the United States dates back to the Iran hostage crisis. In 1979, the United States Embassy was overtaken by hundreds of Iranian protesters, taking 90 people hostage, including 63 U.S. citizens. Well, mainly students at Tehran University have taken over the embassy. We are not occupiers, they said. We have thrown out the occupiers. But instead of chasing all the Americans out of the compound, the Iranians imprisoned them in a building somewhere on these grounds. They have been hostages ever since. These events were portrayed in the beginning of the popular film Argo. The attack on the U.S. Embassy and the taking of the hostages was a violation of diplomatic immunity as laid out at the Vienna Congress of 1814, an agreement that even the Nazis had respected during World War II. This takeover was supported by Iran's new leader, the Ayatollah Khomeini, who referred to the United States as the Great Satan. For a government to applaud mob violence and terrorism, for a government actually to support and in effect participate in the taking and the holding of hostages is unprecedented in human history. President Jimmy Carter said that this attack on the U.S. Embassy was an act of terrorism. And that we refuse to permit the use of terrorism and the seizure and the holding of hostages to impose political demands. I am ordering that we discontinue purchasing of any oil from Iran for delivery to this country. By executive order, President Carter forbade all financial transactions with Iran according to Carter's executive order number 12205. American citizen Mark Rich broke this law using his Swiss company to buy 8 to 10 million metric tons of oil per year from the National Iranian Oil Company. The U.S. hostage crisis ended 444 days after the embassy takeover. It cost Jimmy Carter the presidency, with the Ayatollah Khomeini releasing the hostages minutes after Ronald Reagan was sworn in on January 20, 1981. In 1983, Rudy Giuliani was appointed U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York and pursued criminal charges against Rich under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, otherwise known as the RICO Act. Under this act, Giuliani could freeze all of Rich's personal and business assets before the case even went to trial. Giuliani would later use this same act in the early 1990s to nab mafioso John Gotti. Mark Rich fled the country and shortly thereafter attempted to have two steamer trunks full of business documents smuggled out of the U.S. and join him in Switzerland. The plane was stopped moments before takeoff and the documents seized. On September 19, 1983, Rudy Giuliani brought 51 counts of fraud, racketeering, tax evasion, and other charges against Mark Rich and his associates, particularly Pincus Green. Rich faced up to 325 years in jail if convicted. Rich remained in Switzerland with his wife Denise Rich. He continued to do business without interruption because the extradition treaty between the United States and Switzerland does not include tax crimes. Under U.S. law, the accused cannot be tried in their absence. Rich was put on the FBI's 10 most wanted list, and between 1979 and 1994, made an estimated $2 billion selling oil to apartheid South Africa, Gaddafi's Libya, Kim Il-sung's North Korea, Fidel Castro's Cuba, and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Over the next decade, federal agents came close to nabbing Mark Rich several times. They missed him at Heathrow Airport in London, and another time watched helplessly as his private plane changed course in midair instead of landing in Finland as expected. Events like these supported the notion that the Riches had a source within international law enforcement. Mark Rich sold his company in 1994, having made billions, and was looking to clear his name. His team of lawyers and assistants included a former Israeli spy, Avner Azoulay, and Jack Quinn, a lawyer who was President Clinton's White House counsel from 1995 to 1997 and Vice President Al Gore's Chief of Staff from 1993 to 1995. In 2000, U.S. Attorney Mary Jo White again denied Rich's lawyers any possibility of negotiating, stating that it was the firm policy of the Southern District of New York not to negotiate dispositions of criminal charges with fugitives. The lawyers of Mark Rich now focused on the possibility of a presidential pardon. 
As stated in the U.S. Constitution, a pardon allows the accused to go free of any or all charges, except if he or she is accused of impeachment. In order to receive a pardon, the petition is submitted to a special pardon attorney at the Department of Justice, examined and if approved, sent to the Associate Attorney General, who is the number three in the department. Then the Attorney General advises the President as to whether he should accept or refuse the petition. Rich's security expert, Azule, recommended avoiding the traditional pardon procedure of going through the Department of Justice because, if we do this, the story would immediately explode in the media. Eric Holder was the Deputy Attorney General at the Department of Justice at this time. He was the only person at the Department of Justice consulted about the possibility of Mark Rich's pardon. Jack Quinn reached out to Eric Holder, and in the late fall of 2000, Deputy Attorney General Holder advised that it should be submitted directly to the White House. Mr. Holder told me that he had said to the White House counsel he was neutral leaning towards favorable on the pardon. Jack Quinn prepared the petition in late November 2000, and a couple weeks later he submitted it to Bill Clinton on December 11th, avoiding the press. Attached to that petition was a personal letter from Denise Rich, whom Mark Rich divorced in 1996, awarding her $200 million. Denise stated in her letter to Bill on behalf of Mark's pardon petition, I'm writing as a friend and as an admirer of yours. According to the New York Times, Bill Clinton considered Denise Rich to be one of his closest friends. Since 1992, while still married to fugitive Mark Rich, Denise Rich donated more than $1.1 million to the Democratic Party. She was especially close to Bill and Hillary Clinton, whose election campaigns she helped finance, and she donated $450,000 to Bill Clinton's presidential library in Little Rock, Arkansas. During the Clinton administration, Denise Rich visited the White House 19 times while still married to fugitive Mark Rich. In 1998, when the president appeared in public for the first time after the publication of independent counsel Kenneth Starr's report on the Monica Lewinsky affair, it was at an event in Denise's penthouse. Clinton also appeared as a speaker at a fundraiser for the GNP Foundation, a cancer research organization Denise founded Bill Clinton can be seen here in an ad for the GNP Foundation. There has never been a better time to invest money in cancer research, ever. And it is highly likely that the money you invest in this project will actually directly lead to the dramatic acceleration of cures for cancer, preventions for cancer, and the savings of other children's lives. One week after President Clinton received the petition for Rich's pardon, Denise also spoke directly to the President about the issue on December 20th at the National Medal of Arts and the National Humanities Medal. Denise told him in a private moment that the pardon would mean a lot to me. On January 20th, 2001, Mark Rich was pardoned. How does this relate to Hillary Clinton? Denise Rich gave $100,000 to Hillary Clinton's campaign when she was running for New York Senator in 2000 against none other then Republican candidate Rudy Giuliani, the man who attempted to prosecute Denise Rich's former husband 17 years earlier. Giuliani would eventually cancel his bid due to a diagnosis of prostate cancer and marital woes. I've decided that what I should do is to, is to put my health first. This is not the right time for me to run for office. Giuliani stayed on as mayor of New York City, winning Times Person of the Year for his efforts in rebuilding New York City after the attack on the World Trade Center. Hillary's new opponent was Rick Lazio. I don't want any more evasion. The truth is, Tim, is that Mrs. Clinton has been airing millions of dollars in soft money ads. It's the height of hypocrisy to talk about soft money when she's been raising soft money by the bucket loads out in Hollywood and spending all that money on negative advertising. Height of hypocrisy. Hillary would defeat Lazio, winning the election on November 7th, 2000. Tonight, I'm just overwhelmed by the kindness and support that I've been given. The petition for Mark Rich's pardon would arrive on Bill Clinton's desk 29 days later. Hillary Clinton was sworn in as United States Senator on January 3rd, 2001. 17 days later, on January 20th, 2001, President Bill Clinton pardoned Mark Rich within hours of leaving office.
Federal prosecutors and Congress investigated the pardon, and in 2002, a House of Representatives committee concluded Denise Rich swayed the action through donations to the Clinton Library and campaign. Denise Rich bought her ex-husband's pardon by donating money to Hillary Clinton's Senate campaign and Bill's presidential library. In recent years, Denise Rich decided to renounce her U.S. citizenship to save tens of millions of dollars in taxes, selling her 24-room, $65 million penthouse on Fifth Avenue in New York City. So now we're standing in a $65 million penthouse listing, the largest ever on Fifth Avenue. That's true. This apartment is owned by Denise Rich, who's a very famous songwriter. You know, not that many people have recording studios with a view of Central Park on Fifth Avenue. And I, in fact, I don't think anyone does. Why is this apartment listing now for sale? Ah, good question. The owner is not here very often anymore. It's a big apartment. She had kids living here with her. They don't live here anymore. She spends most of her time away. And she needs to, you know, she wants to downsize a little. She doesn't need a big, big place. The public outcry for the pardon was immediate and relentless. The LA Times reported former President Jimmy Carter as saying, I don't think there is any doubt that some of the factors in his pardon were attributable to his large gifts. In my opinion, that was disgraceful. As quoted in the book, The King of Oil, William Sapphire, a Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the New York Times, said that the pardon was the most flagrant abuse of the presidential pardon in US history. Rudy Giuliani stated in the same book that he was flabbergasted and it took me about a day to actually absorb the fact that the President of the United States actually pardoned one of our most notorious fugitives. Howard Safer, former New York City Fire Commissioner and former New York City Police Commissioner, told Larry King that he was outraged because this sends a message to the criminals around the world that if you have influence, if you have money, and if you have access, you can put out a sign that says, justice for sale. According to mentor and former counsel to the Clinton White House, Judge Abner Mikva said President Obama was very, very dismayed by the Mark Rich pardon and the basis on which it appears to have been granted. World-renowned and respected self-made billionaire Warren Buffett said that Mark Rich was a pariah. For every one person that knew he was a terrible guy beforehand, there's a hundred or a thousand now. Money leads to bad things in politics. As for the Clintons, they have continued to use their political clout, receiving massive payoffs from international resources disguised as speaking fees. It has been reported you've made five million making speeches. The president's made more than a hundred million dollars. Well, if, if you, you have no reason to remember, but we came out of the White House not only dead broke, but in debt. Uh, money when we got there and we struggled to you know piece together the resources for mortgages for houses as Hillary has stated the Clintons left the White House broke in January 2001 through their Clinton Global Initiative also known as the Clinton Foundation Bill Clinton has funneled monies from speaking engagements worldwide in exchange for political favors as heavily researched and examined in Clinton cash as of April 2016, the Amazon review for this book was overwhelmingly positive and bipartisan. If you check this personally, please do so immediately. It's been recently found that the pro-Clinton super PAC, called Correct the Record, has spent $1 million trying to sway Bernie Sanders supporters on social media, addressing thousands of people on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and Instagram. This constitutes propaganda, and these are the exact tactics employed by Vladimir Putin whose government hires hundreds of Russians to post pro-Kremlin propaganda online under fake identities, including on Twitter, in order to create the illusion of a massive army of supporters. Clinton Cash examined the Clinton's finances, going from broke in 2001 to amassing $130 million before taxes in only 15 years. Mark Rich died in 2013, but his business partners, lawyers, advisors, and friends have showered millions of dollars on the Clintons following the pardon. The Clinton Foundation is marketed as a philanthropist's paradise, but it turns out it's a sunny place for shady people. 
A uh, lot to cover on this latest controversy about the Clinton Foundation and whether it will impact the Clinton presidential campaign. The New York Times the other day had a very good story. If you haven't read it, folks, go online and find it. About it. At the time, the United States government was making a deal with Russia to allow Russia to expand its control over uranium. Uh, Bill Clinton is getting contributions from Canadian businessmen who are involved in this deal to the Clinton Foundation. He goes over to Russia and gives a big speech paid for by a bank that is involved in this transaction. And now the New York Times is saying Secretary Clinton, candidate Clinton, has some answering to do. But there's always the Mark Rich question. Why did he give that guy, uh, you know, the pardon? Here's another example. In November 2015, a Washington Post article that compliments the Clintons for their ability to raise so much money actually has Denise Rich on the cover of the article, essentially praising this corruption. In the same article, the journalists praise Frank Justra as being one of the elite donors to contribute to the Clinton Foundation, donating $25 million. Justra was named in the April 2016 Panama paper scandal, hoarding money in overseas bank accounts to avoid paying taxes. Gilbert Shigore was a former business associate of Mark Rich and donator to the Clinton Foundation. He was also implicated in the Panama Papers scandal. Before the Panama Papers scandal broke, these same people were examined in Clinton Cash, published in May of 2015. Author of Clinton Cash, Peter Schweizer, was interviewed by reporter and President Bill Clinton's former Director of Communications, George Stephanopoulos. Unfit for the presidency. Well, I think the real question here, George, is when you ever have an issue of the flow of funds to political candidates, whether that's to their campaigns, whether that's to private foundations, whether that's to their spouse, uh, is there evidence of a pattern uh, of, of favorable decisions being made for those individuals? And I think the, the point that we make in the book is that there's a trouble pattern. There are dozens of examples of that occurring. Some people, I think particularly the Clinton camp, would say that these are all coincidence. Uh, I don't think when you're talking about 12 instances you're talking coincidence. I think you're talking trend. These are President Clinton's responses to Clinton Cash during an interview with NBC's Nightly News. The interview was rebroadcast by right-leaning news network Fox. There has been a very deliberate attempt to take the foundation down. We did disclose all the foreign governments. There was no attempt to hide them. The guy that filled out the forms made an error. It's not like we didn't tell everybody who gave us the money. We just, the guy put it on the wrong form. There's this big nefarious strategy to exercise terrible influence over the American government by talking wealthy people in countries and then to give them money to help the poor people. That's the theory of the case. And I just don't believe over the long run, the American people won't figure that out. When asked about the allegations within Clinton cash, Hillary has brushed off the accusations as simple Republican attacks. Secretary Clinton, your reaction, please, to these book allegations. Did foreign entities receive any special treatment for making any kind of donations to the foundation or your husband? Well, we're back into the political season, and therefore we will be subjected to all kinds of distraction and attacks. Uh, and uh, I'm ready for that. I know that that comes, unfortunately, with the territory. It is, um, I think, worth noting that uh, the Republicans seem to be uh, talking only about me. Uh, I don't know what they'd talk about if I weren't in the race. Uh, but I am in the race, and uh, hopefully we'll get onto the issues, and I look forward to that. She has been using the same divergent tactic since being First Lady. The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy that has been conspiring against my husband since the day he announced for president. And this has been a Clinton playbook. When you are mm -hmm. criticized, just say the person attacking us is political. They are partisan. It doesn't matter if there are actual facts in here. And again, the New York Times did get some of its information from this conservative author who's writing the book Clinton Cash. He's a conservative. There's no question about that. The New York, he gave some of this information. He said, look what I found to the New York Times, which not independently verified it and added its own reporting. Hillary herself has amassed a small fortune from paid speaking engagements with Wall Street special interests, such as Goldman Sachs claiming that she will still be able to police Wall Street, even though they paid her enormous sums of money. One of the things that Senator Sanders points to, and a lot of your critics point to, is you made three speeches for Goldman Sachs. You were paid $675,000 for three speeches. Was that a mistake? I mean, was that a bad error in judgment? Look, I made speeches to lots of groups. I told them what I thought. I answered questions. But did you have to be paid $675,000? 
Well, I don't know. Um, that's what they offered. But in all of my years of public life, I have never profited, never profited from public service. I've earned every cent. And in all of my years of public life, I have never obstructed justice. And I think, too, that I can say that in my years of public life, that I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. The American presidency is the toughest job in the world. American lives literally depend on who is leading the country. Because of the duty, it's the most rigorous interview process. Former presidential candidates have had to give over their health records, their college school records, their taxes. But Hillary Clinton has refused to release the transcripts for speeches she made for Wall Street. Even the Washington Post wrote that she pulled in at least $69 million in political contributions from the employees and PACs of banks, insurance companies, and securities and investment firms. The Associated Press has stated in an article from April 21, 2016, that almost all of the 82 corporations, trade associations, and other groups that paid for or sponsored Clinton's speeches have actively sought to sway the government with these special interests following Clinton to the White House if she won. When will this corruption end? Do not elect this corruption back into power because it will not lead the free world. It starts and ends with the people. Vote out special interests. Vote out corruption. Vote against Hillary Clinton. Because if we do elect Hillary to be our next president, this is how her and her husband will run the White House. Well, the Clinton Foundation, Hillary Clinton has left the board of the Clinton Foundation to run for president. The foundation has taken some heat for taking foreign donations. You and I have gone at this and criticized them for it right here in this spot. Now they say they're going to stop that almost. Uh, they will continue to take money from Australia, Canada, Germany, the Netherlands, Norway, and the United Kingdom. Uh, the good guys, democracies, if you will. Is that okay? No. You, you can't be a little bit pregnant. She's going to be president of the United States. These are allies, but they also have... Um, uh, interests and um, ways they, they might want to influence our government and they're giving government to uh, giving money to a potential presidential candidate's family foundation that should not happen all the sources can be found below play it forward